Okay, what's up guys? So today we're going to be doing another video on Minecraft servers. This time it's going to be the Minecraft Bedrock dedicated server. And uh, surprisingly, this is actually, in my opinion, easier than uh, getting a traditional Minecraft server running because it doesn't require some of the components that the other Minecraft server needed, like Java. Um, and if you're doing an advanced Minecraft, like I just did in the last video, where it's Minecraft with spigot, you're building the spigot um, jar file, and that takes um, even additional um, complications. And so um, I wanted to make a video on this because I had to f I had to figure it out myself. Like, I know on Microsoft's site, they've got their Bedrock download page here. Wow, I don't know what happened here. But basically it says, you know, here's the dedicated Linux one, and it says, hey, just... Download it, unzip it, and run this. Well, <clears throat> I feel like it's got to be a little bit more to it than just that. I mean, it's pretty close, but um, it's not like that. That's, it needs to be more than that. Like, if you want to expose it to your friends so they can connect to it from outside your network, you got to do some stuff, um, and uh, you got to configure the permissions. You got to learn how to do the permissions. I want it to run as a service so that when the Linux host boots. It auto starts. I want to be able to connect to the console of the Minecraft server because I need to run some OP and allow list commands. And I don't want to have to start and stop the server all the time to do that. So in this build, we're going to use Tmux so that you can connect to the session, if you will, that the service is running, uh, the Minecraft server service is running as. And so you can run some commands against it without starting or stopping it. That's really beneficial because the allow list command apparently doesn't work even for OPs. And so even if somebody's leveled up to the operator or the OP level where they can do all the commands like teleport and spawn things and things like that, um, you apparently can't do an allow list add, which I think is crazy. I don't think you can do an OP either on somebody else. I don't know that for sure because I didn't test the OP thing, but I know the allow list basically just says you don't have permissions to do it. So I don't know what the trick is there. I haven't figured that out yet. But in the meantime, what um, we'll do is we'll just run those commands on the Linux server. So this is very similar to the way that I built all the other servers that I have, like Ark and Valheim and Minecraft, is that we're going to run the service or the the Bedrock Minecraft server daemon under uh, its own user account. So we're going to do MC server. And uh, so we're just going to create a user here. I'm going to sign a password, like I said in the previous video, which I don't know if you've watched it, but if you, I would recommend putting a different password here, not just using the one that I've got here. We're not going to use this password because we're going to SU to the user as root, and we don't need a password for that. Um, but in case you needed to use a password or some, you could potentially save it. Um, I don't think you'll ever use this. So it's probably not useful to save it, but just make it something that's uh, big, long, complicated. And you can use this password generator site here. Um, just pick like the default. It gives you 20 characters. It only does numbers and letters, and so you'll get a 20-character password here, just like that, and that's good enough, in my opinion. So, all right, so let's get going. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a user called MC user. Oh, actually, the first thing we're going to do, since it's a brand-new Linux box, always uh, we want to get in as root, by the way, so I'm going to do everything as root for now. So always do an update and an upgrade to make sure it's fully patched. Again, as I said in previous videos, it's always a good idea to make sure that everything you have is is patched. There could be some exploits somewhere, and if you're going to expose it externally, you want everything to the latest release possible. Um, difficult to address the zero days, but a zero day basically means that only the person exploiting is aware of it, like the vendor is not aware, things like that. So zero days are hard to address, but but they get rolled in as soon as somebody finds out about them they get rolled into a security release and, and it's patched and so you just want to make sure that you keep your system up to date as best as possible and as quickly as possible um, it's not too hard to update your system in linux uh, honestly i found it faster and easier than windows and so we'll just run this apt upgrade here it shouldn't take too long it'll complete here in a bit Holy cow, good thing I paused it there. That took way longer than I thought it was gonna. A couple minutes there. Okay, so now we're fully up to date. We're gonna go ahead and copy this line here and we're just gonna create the MC user account and we wanna do create home. So it's gonna create a home folder instead of shell, which is fine. So go ahead and run that. Now if we CD back to just the home folder, you can see in the home folder is now an MC user. And this is where we're going to install um, Minecraft. And so 
you can see the commands here. I've got them listed. CD home MC user, same thing. We're going to create a directory called Minecraft. We're going to go ahead and paste that in there. I'm going to CD to that folder. And then I'm going to download the bedrock URL. Now, what I wanted to do, just so that you know that this is uh, accurate, we're going to paste it like this. And you can compare if you'd like. You can go to the actual page, minecraft.net, and we're going to go down here. Um, yeah, sure, we agree. And then I want to right click on this and I'm going to say copy link. And well, I guess I can't do it there. So we'll just do it here for now. I know. No, hold on a second. Okay, so what I did is I opened Notepad, I pasted it in there. So here, let me drag the window up. Okay, so I've got this URL here that I've added into this wgit command. The wgit command is really long. And the reason for that is I'm done comparing these two just as a proof. You can see that this exact same download link, right? And that's from, uh, that's the latest version. So the reason that we're doing such a unique uh, wget command here, we're setting a user agent is because if you don't, the minecraft.net servers actually prevent the download from happening. So you can't just say wget and then the URL. It, it thinks it's like a bot or something. I, I'm not sure. My guess is that it's blocking anything that doesn't look like a web browser, which is kind of crazy because if you're on a Linux box setting this up as a dedicated Linux server, how, what are you going to, you can do it with the graphical interface? I mean, I suppose you could, and then you open a browser and you download it that way. But I think the better way to do it would just be to do wget. So what I had to do is add a user agent header in there, and it simulates, if you will, a browser. And so it actually lets it download. Okay, so uh, not too large of an installer. Um, one of the things I omitted from my steps here, and I'll need to add them, is, hold on a second. Uh, is the apt install commands. So I need to install unzip and I was going to install W3M, which is a text based web browser. I'll show you that in a second. So let's just go ahead and install both of these guys and I'll add the I'll update the notes here in a second. All right. So um, the reason we need to unzip, obviously, is the next command we're going to run is unzipping it. So I'm going to unzip the bedrock server and I'm going to unzip it right into Minecraft folder. So it's going to like right at the root. It's not going to create another folder of the zip file name or anything. It's just going to extract everything right in this folder. It's exactly what I want. And so now if we do LO or LS, whatever, you can see that uh, it extracted the bedrock server binary. It's executable there. Here's a how-to guide in HTML, which again, like, how are you going to view this? So you can read this. I mean, you could do like a, a, a cat on it. Let's see what that looks like. It's going to be weird. So if you cat it, I mean, it's just HTML, right? You could go through this and, and understand it. You could also use that W3M thing I was talking about. So we're going to say, oh my gosh, what's the name of this? Oh, that's why. It's not how-to, it's bedrock. So W3M, and I'd be... It, processes the HTML for you. And it's still kind of rough, frankly, but it's a little bit better. So it kind of explains the permissions and the structure and how to do things in the server settings and stuff like that. Yep. So do I want to quit? Yes. So that's W3M. So that's a fun little tool to a text based web browser. Um, so uh, we're not going to go through that HTML because uh, I already have everything that I wanted set set. And so I'll show you how I did it. And so let's just proceed. The next thing we're going to do is, as you can see, everything in this folder is owned by root. It can't be owned by root. It needs to be owned by the MC server user. And so we're just going to do a quick ch own on everything recursively. I Karumba in this folder like that. And now you can see everything's MC server. And it's recursive, so it went into every single folder and made every file that way. So even things inside config definitions, resource packs, etc. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to edit server properties. And what I want to do is a couple things. I'm going to change the server name. By the way, if you're using VI like I just did, uh, it's a complicated or semi-complicated text tool, but you get used to it. And you'll end up liking it more than other ones, even Nano. You could use Nano instead of VI if you want. So just replace VI with the word Nano. And if it's not there, you can install Nano by apt space install space Nano. And it's a little bit easier. It kind of has like Control X, Control S for save or Control O for save and stuff like that. Whereas VI requires you to hit I to insert. That means you're going to edit and escape gets back out of it. So I, and you can see that at the bottom. Okay, so server name, we're going to call this <clears throat> uh, Geekhead MC Bedrock. 
And that actually comes up when you try to connect to the server, it'll actually say that in the description underneath of the server when you add it. Um, game mode survival, I do like game mode survival. We'll stick with easy. I do want to allow cheats. This allows you to use <clears throat> or set OP and let OPs actually run commands. So we're going to keep that enabled. Online mode is good, I think. It didn't seem to hinder anything I was doing, so I would recommend online mode. It probably prevents like hackers from connecting in or something. Um, I'm also going to do an allow list for you guys just because I think it, it, you don't have to do it. You can let anything and everybody connect to your server as long as they're authenticated with Xbox if you have this alon, alon, online mode enabled. Or you can whitelist your users or allow list your users so that it's only set to certain users that you want to play, which is probably good unless you want people randomly showing up and breaking your stuff. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to set was where there was another command in here. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, let me look at my let me look at my stuff here. I guess not. I guess that's all I set. Anything else look interesting? Chat restrictions? No. Uh, was there a disabled PvP? I don't recall seeing that. All right, we'll just leave it like that. So I'm going to hit escape, get out of insert mode, colon, WQ for right quit. So save and quit. So my server properties are edited. Got allow cheats and allow list enabled. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to configure the uh, system CTL service or daemon. So this will auto run every time the server comes up. So we're going to edit a minecraft.service file. And this is what the service name is going to be called. And then I'll go into insert mode. And then I'm going to come in here and I'll copy this definition that I wrote. And I'll explain it in a second. And we'll paste it in here. Okay, so uh, description as expected, wants and after. This just basically means it wants the network online and it's going to wait till these other services are running. Um, some restart stuff, what user it runs off, uh, as MC server. And then type is forking. This is a new one. I haven't done this for other services yet. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using Tmux to uh, start this process and so you have to say that it's going to fork because tmux is going to fork it to another session and the reason i'm using this tmux session is because i want to connect to it later on and be able to run commands like um allow list and op and so i'll show you how that works here in a second but let's go ahead and Edit, exit, enter mode. We're going to do a right quit. So we've saved that. So now we need to do a system CTL daemon reload. So it's going to read that service file we just created. I'm going to enable it. Enable it means auto start. I'm going to go ahead and start it now. See what it does. Should run. And if we run a status, it'll tell us what it's doing. So you can see the Minecraft service got the little green emblem there. That means it's running, started. I would say that it's working. So you're not going to get a lot of data in the service anymore because we are running it as Tmux. So you actually would have to go into Tmux session to see the output, which is okay because we want to be able to modify that output and do commands like I was explaining here. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to switch user su space dash space mc server. So I went from root to the mc server. See, I went into the mc server user. I'm logged in as that user and I didn't have to do the password. So that's what I was talking about earlier. Uh, let's go ahead and change directory into Minecraft folder. Uh, now I want to do is Tmux ls. It's going to list all of your current Tmux uh, sessions. And so we've got one, Minecraft. And we started it at uh, 1502. And that is literally this service here, right? So this Tmux new session, session name Minecraft, and then the execute voltage you're running. So that's what this is. So we're going to go ahead and connect to it. So it's the Tmux attach. Dash T, I think probably stands for tag or something like that, but it's basically referencing the Minecraft name, the same name that's right here. And we're going to connect into that session, if you will, and it shows it to us. So now we're actually looking at the log output that if you weren't using Tmux, you would have saw this under system CTL status Minecraft, but now it's in a different session. So, so we can see it here, right? The Minecraft server started. It's got all this info, um, something about tele telemetry message. They want you to enable that. If you want to, that's fine. Um, yeah, so basically I can actually run commands here. So this is an interface that I can do things. And so this is as the server console, you have no restrictions on the commands you can run here. You can run whatever you want, anything that's allowed. So I'm going to go ahead and say allow list, add desert moose, which doesn't work because that's not my Minecraft name anymore. But if you were to do that, it would add it to the allow list. Now, 
uh, the new bedrock, unlike the old Minecraft, I can't just OP him either. So I can't say, well, I want to OP that person. It's going to be like, well, there's no targets matching that selector. Well, that's because he's never connected. You can only OP somebody in bedrock, apparently, if they're logged in at that exact moment. So if you've enabled the allow list, nobody can connect to your server until you do an allow list add. If you're going to do an allow list add for your account would be the best start for that, or your friends or whatever, or all of them at once. And then they connect in, and whoever you want to OP, once they're connected, then you run the OP command like I just showed you on their name. And um, and that that's just basically how you have to do it with Bedrock. I thought it's kind of a bummer, but it is what it is. Like, that's just, I couldn't find any other way to do it. This has got to be the only way, I think. Um, so that's how you're going to add your, your friends. They don't have, you don't have to OP all of them. Only OP the people you want to be able to do things, because if they know how to cheat or they want to cheat, or maybe they're known to cheat, then if you OP them, they're going to be like giving themselves diamonds and all kinds of fun stuff. And you'll be like, dude, how are you so much further ahead than me? That would be why. Um, a couple, another command that's useful, you can say list. It'll actually show you how many users are online and what the usernames are. So as people connect, you can say list, look at their names and be like, okay, that's who I want to OP or something like that. Now, what I found was frustrating is that... Um, when you if if you have the allow list enabled, they're not in the allow list. It doesn't even show a log here that they tried to connect. Like it just says nothing. It would be nice if it showed who was attempting to connect but failing, because then you could take that name and just say allow list add. Um, so what you need to get from your friends is or yours is when you open Bedrock and you're at that main screen. It's got the play the realms button, etc. It's got your little icon there or your little guy's character, and it's got a name above it. That's the name that you would do in the allow list. All right, so now you're stuck in this console, right? How do you get back out? Well, the commands are Control B, so you hit Control B, and then not not holding Control anymore. Then you hit D, and it disconnects and it detaches. So I listed that here, Control B D. All right, so the next thing I wanted to show you was uh, we're going to look at these allow lists. So if you if you do in a cat allow list, you can see it's kind of like just ugly JSON like that. But if you do a JQ JQ dot and then allow list, it'll prettyify it. So it just makes it easier to read. So you can say JQ dot and then permissions as well. And there's nothing in permissions because I haven't OP'd anybody because I hadn't connected in. Um, so that's basically it. You've got a Minecraft dedicated bedrock server running on Ubuntu Linux. This is Ubuntu 2404.1. And um, yeah, so the next step you need to do if you want to make this external, like this, this would already work for everybody inside your house. You just got to give them the IP address to connect to, and they should be able to connect to it. Now, if you want it to expose it to your friends outside of your house, you have to open the port 19132. Or if you customize the port, you can do that. It's in server properties, but by default, this is the port. So <clears throat> this port... Um, you just need to expose it by doing a port forward or a NAT or whatever. It's probably port forward. Most home routers call it port forwarding. Port forward that only to the IP address of this system. Don't, don't port forward all over the place. Don't do all ports. It has to be one port to one IP destination. That is all you need to do. Don't do any more than that because you don't want to expose anything out on the internet. Port forwarding basically means you're poking holes in the firewall and letting traffic in. So any kind of traffic on this port can flow through. The Minecraft server is only going to respond to approved traffic, but the, but the reality is, is that's your gate now. The Minecraft Bedrock server service is the gate for what's allowed, allowable traffic on that port. We don't have any advanced you know, intrusion prevention at home, and so you, it's literally just going to be whatever traffic gets sent to that port, Minecraft Bedrock server handles it, and if it's, if it's, a, if it's bad packets, bad design, or somebody trying to exploit, Minecraft Bedrock server is the one that has to gate and control that. All right, so just cat, just a reminder though, if you expose your services externally to the internet, it in, it would you know invite maybe hackers to try to figure out how to exploit your systems, and if they can get into your Linux host like this, then they can move lottery across your network. So just have to call that out. It's not likely to happen, but it is a probable probability, very very low probability. All right, guys, um, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope it was beneficial and useful for you. Uh, leave comments in the comment section below, and I'll try to help you out if you're running into any problems. Thank you so much.